What's up sports fans, my name is Jake and welcome back to Game Day Eats. This week the Pittsburgh Steelers are trying to invade Tampa Bay and plunder the Buccaneers pirate ship to cap off a week three action. So that means we are tackling my native city's dish, the Cuban sandwich. Now sit back and relax, this is Game Day Eats. And one of the major flavors in the Cuban sandwich is the pork. All the recipes I found said that this has to be the ingredient that you make from scratch if you're making it yourself, which is why we're here and it aligns to our make one ingredient rule. There are a few ways to make the pork, which include roasting or letting it marinate in a mojo sauce. And I wanna add more flavor to the sandwich, so I prepped mine with mojo pork. So I prepped my mojo pork yesterday because I knew I was making this today. I learned planning goes a long way when you're cooking. So here's the breakdown to make your own mojo mojo pork, four cloves of garlic, three tablespoons of orange juice, three tablespoons of lime juice, one teaspoon dried oregano, two teaspoons of kosher salt, one teaspoon ground black pepper, one teaspoon ground cumin, one teaspoon ground coriander, three tablespoons of olive oil, one and a half teaspoons white wine vinegar, and one four pound pork shoulder roast. The Cuban sandwich is the younger sibling to the ham and cheese sandwich. And you know, the sibling your parents keep talking about and go on and on about how they're starting an investment company down in Miami with their best friend, that one. The thing is that even the Cuban sandwich runs into fraud allegations too. Over the years, there have been many claims that this sandwich originated in Miami, but the internet says that's not true, so I believe it. Traditionally, the sandwich is made with ham, roasted pork, Swiss cheese, pickles, mustard, and sometimes salami, all pressed on a Cuban bread. Salami is an important ingredient for us today because of Tampa's version of the Cuban usually has it because of its association with the Italian community. Now, diving into the history of a sandwich I eat regularly was really eye-opening. There are specific measurements of how long the bread needs to be when finished, the angle of the mid-cut, and the measurements of butter to olive oil ratio on the crust. I'm just making this for us, so I don't expect to be brought to court on breaking away just a little bit. Another factor to a traditional Cuban sandwich is toasting the bread. Like I talked about last week, I'm not a professional chef whatsoever, and I work with what I have. So here's how we're gonna make a press. We're gonna take one pan and set it to a medium high temperature, and then let about two tablespoons of butter coat the bottom. And while you're waiting on that, grab another pan and something heavy that can get hot. Once you have your heavy, heatable item and the butter is melted, place the sandwich in and the pan on top with your handy, heavy, heatable item on top of that. Wait until the bottom piece is golden brown, which is about four to five minutes, and then flip that sucker and repeat the golden brown process. Having the host team be my city has its perks because it is so much easier finding a local beer. I just have to poll my neighbors and coworkers, and the resounding answer to the question of what beer defines Tampa was Cigar City Brewing's Jai Lai. And now that we've finished cooking our Cuban, it's time to eat it. And for our Jai Lai, Hi Lai, let's try this out. Now I'm not normally a fan of IPAs, however, this is amazing. The Pittsburgh Steelers head to their second away game of the season and the first in a prime time slot. There's been a lot of controversy coming from the Steel City, not only this week, but for the whole off season with Le'Veon Bell and his refusal to sign the franchise tag. Pair that with the fact that their other offensive star and cover boy for Madden 2019, Antonio Brown, created some ways by not showing up to mandatory meetings this past Monday, and head coach Mike Tomlin told the press on Thursday that Antonio did get disciplined, but really didn't go into details. With all this adversity, second year wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster is looking to continue his strong statistical season after a monster game in Kansas City last week where he had 13 receptions for 121 yards and a touchdown. Add that to 119 yards against the Browns in week one and it appears Roethlisberger has a new crush. I'm also very proud of the fact that I went the whole segment without any juju jokes. 
Now we dive into Tampa Bay Bucks, who has grabbed national attention with the help of their backup quarterback, Ryan Fitzpatrick, or Fitzmagic, but that's still going through a trademark battle with Minka Fitzpatrick of the Miami Dolphins, so we'll put that on hold for now. The Bucks have always been known for their defensive prowess, but it seems to have taken a backseat for this season's offense, and it's about time they shared the burden of playing a football game. We've talked about the feelings that some of the players have towards Jameis Winston possibly coming back in last week's In The Loop, but if Fitzpatrick has another career day tonight, there is no denying that Jameis will continue to ride the bench until Fitz loses the match. Now, last week got me closer to a win with the score being three points off, but choosing the wrong team. However, a loss is a loss and I don't make excuses. Just more predictions. And who am I to challenge the great Ryan McGregor Fitzpatrick and his dream season so far? With the Steelers struggling with their offensive skill players either in Miami on yachts or skipping meetings, I'm going to take the Buccaneers by a score of 35 to 28. Week three will be wrapped tonight, so make sure to stay in the loop and catch its new episode posting this Thursday. Subscribe and watch next week as we make green chili fries when Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs head to Denver to take on Case Keenum and the Broncos for week four's Monday Night Football. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the field. Worn out faces, bright and early for the day.